after watching a grueling 15 rounds of voting for the Speaker of the House, uh, the now Speaker of the House, uh, Kevin McCarthy, is officially owned by the Freedom Caucus. Um, the Freedom Caucus now has actually not only, you know, uh, made Kevin McCarthy look like a an abs I mean, he's clearly going to be one of the weakest Speaker of the Houses that the country has ever seen. Um, but after battling him tooth and nail throughout this whole process, they have officially, uh, it seems like, negotiated a cut to defense spending as well as potentially other things. Um, as we saw that news break, we actually watched in real time uh, defense stocks actually begin to drop. Um, just tears coming down my eyes. Uh, let's take a look at this article from Bloomberg that explains a bit more. McCarthy's speaker deal could stymie defense spending next year. His proposal would cap discretionary spending at 2022 levels. Plan is likely to spur backlash from defense hawks in Congress. The emerging deal Kevin McCarthy is discussing to make him speaker of the House could make agreements on new defense spending impossible next year at a time when the U.S. is intent on backing Ukraine against the Russian invasion and growing more wary of China's stepped-up aggression toward Taiwan. Part of the agreement being discussed would be to cap fiscal year 2024 discretionary spending across government at 2022 levels, according to three people familiar with the discussions. National defense spending, which primarily funds the Pentagon, was about $782 billion, with a B, uh, 782 billion. Again, meanwhile, so many other things that could use a billion dollars won't even get it, including, you know, uh, water in Jackson and, and elsewhere. Um, 782 billion in fiscal year 2022, and rose to 75 billion. Rose 75 billion to 857 billion in fiscal year 2023. Lawmakers would have to contend with a $130 billion cut to discretionary spending, including a potential $75 billion cut to national security, if not more as defense hawks want to increase the budget above this year's levels. Shares of defense contractors declined on the news. Northrop Grumman Corp. and Lockheed Martin Corp. erased gains and were down more than 1% as of 1217 p.m. in New York, while Raytheon powered its advance to trade up 1.2%. The deal that McCarthy had agreed to would have the House commit to passing bills that would cap all discretionary spending at fiscal year 2022 levels, meaning roughly $1.47 trillion. At this point, it seems like those cuts are very likely to happen. Um, again, uh, amidst all of the other things that have been tossed into these negotiations for the Speaker of the House, uh, members of Congress now have a much tighter grip on the Speaker. Um, I believe at this point, one member of Congress can essentially uh, make a motion to vote for a new speaker. Um, so if Kevin McCarthy starts to veer away from some of the promises that he's made to Freedom Caucus members, um, the Freedom Caucus members have the numbers to try to stall a lot of things from happening and potentially try to remove um, McCarthy as speaker. Um, man, uh, personally, I mean, I, I disagree with the members of the Freedom Caucus on a wide variety of things. But I am damn impressed with what they did um, throughout this entire process. And I mean, it's, it's only been days into the new term of Congress, and they're already uh, getting things done that they're, I mean, to their credit, I mean, I, again, I disagree with some of the things that they're doing. I agree with defense cut spending, or defense, defense cuts, like, that's great. Um, we'll see where else they take this, but they're running on, hey, we're going to do this and do that, and... I mean, isn't it interesting to see uh, the, the Freedom Caucus members actually go through and do the things that they say they're going to do? Imagine if progressives would use their power to do the same thing, because in the last Congress, we saw time after time, they had the numbers to, to hold up legislation to force things that they wanted to be put into the bills, and they used that power exactly never times. Um, so it's really interesting to see uh, if the progressives did, you know, what they said they were going to do, and we'll get a little bit more into this later, um, what they could have gotten done, and in a matter of days into this new Congress, uh, the Freedom Caucus is really showing the power that they have here. Um, I'm going to start off here by saying that I think while the Freedom Caucus has this power, I think that the progressives should kind of look and see what they might have in common with the Freedom Caucus to try to help them advance some of the things that both the far, you know, the, the Freedom Caucus folks as well as the progressives have in common. 
Um, I think you'd be surprised to hear that beyond defense spending, there might be a couple of other things that progressives should agree with the Freedom Caucus members on. Um, this was actually sent to me from a friend uh, probably six months ago at this point, maybe four months ago. Um, and it's a video of Matt Gates, um, a member of the Freedom Caucus who was very clearly heavily involved in a lot of these uh, negotiations and holding Kevin McCarthy back from becoming speaker. Um, let's take a listen to what, what Matt Gates said earlier this year. This video really caught me off guard, but I think you're going to surprisingly agree with just about everything he says in this video. Maybe not everything, but a lot of it. And I think that there'd be some room for progressives to potentially even work with these guys on this and maybe learn a thing or two about how to challenge the leadership of your party. I believe that no member of Congress by House rule should be allowed to accept a donation for their campaign from a federal lobbyist or a federal political action committee. That money all has strings attached to it, and anybody who tries to tell you otherwise is lying. And when members take hundreds of thousands of dollars from lobbyists and PACs, they work for them more than they work for their constituents. And guess what? I intend to offer that amendment on the House floor in January, and I already have Democrats ready to vote for it, maybe even all of them. The second thing I would suggest is that if someone is a member of Congress, they should be prohibited from lobbying for life. Why is it so hard to say that you should choose one side or the other to be on? You're either in the lawmaking game or you're in the influence peddling game. And those who choose to be in the influence peddling game, go ahead, but you should sacrifice that when you get the privilege to represent 750,000 people. I intend to offer that amendment on January 3rd, and I expect that there will be Democrats voting for it. I will also introduce an amendment to have a ban on members of Congress trading individual stocks. How can we say that that is not something that dilutes our trust in markets and in governance when people are essentially able to bet on the outcomes that they have an ability to somewhat control? Uh, and I expect Democrats to vote for that. And finally, I would observe something that has really worked well in the state of Florida, a single subject rule. A bill coming to the floor should only deal with one subject. I was incensed as a freshman when I had to vote on the farm bill and whether or not to authorize war in Yemen in the same vote. And we can still have broad bills that relate to insurance or education or appropriations, but the notion that we lash all these things together does not serve our constituents and the American people. And I would expect, if we're in the majority, Democrats will vote for my amendment for a single subject rule. No, that was not a deep fake. Uh, that was actually Matt Gates. And again, I think a lot of progressives should agree with just about everything he said there. We also heard him talk about uh, um, term limits in one of his speeches during the uh, ha Speaker of the House votes. Um, I think that progressives should start to work with these guys and maybe pass a few of these things that are going to make things better for people as a whole and potentially uh, remove some of the corruption going on here. Uh, we'll see if any of that ultimately like gets to happen, but I wouldn't put it past some of these Freedom Caucus members to try to do it. Um, again, I disagree with Matt Gates on a whole lot of stuff. Uh, he's also got a record of some interesting things with younger women that I, is gross. Uh, I don't know all the details of it, but um, but he's an elected member of Congress who's willing to go ahead and try to buck against the Republican establishment. If there are a couple things that progressives agree with him on, they should work with them on it. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing, though, that I can assure you, you know, maybe they'll they'll work with them on this. Hopefully they, they take a couple notes about how to buck the establishment in their own party. But based on comments from the, a from the one and only AOC, uh, we likely are not going to see that because despite her coming in saying we're going to bring the ruckus to Washington, D.C. and, you know, be the people who are going to come in and actually fight and stop legislation and try to get things done, uh, try to pass progressive policies. Um, we have AOC now coming out and making comments that say, man, look at uh, look at all the, the craziness going on on the Republican side. Like, us progressives, we're just, you know, we're, we're basically just going to fall in line and be normal, um, is, is basically what I read it as. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up the article. Exclusive AOC says Republican chaos shows how reasonable progressives like the squad are. Quote, I mean, I think it just highlights how extraordinarily bad faith those accusations of progressive unreasonableness are, even when they come from our side of the aisle. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has told The Independent that Republicans' chaotic efforts to elect a speaker for the new Congress are serving to highlight how grounded and reasonable she and other members of the so-called squad of the progressive Democrats have been. 
Throughout much of her time in Congress, the self-described democratic socialist has heard herself and other progressives described as unreasonable. Former Representative Stephanie Murphy even called the coterie of Democrats the Never Enough Caucus during negotiations about the bipartisan infrastructure bill and passing Build Back Better, but against the background of repealed, repeated failed attempts by the Republicans to elect Kevin McCarthy as Speaker in the face of hard-right GOP opposition, AOC pointed out that many of the debates she was involved in with fellow Democrats were about actual policy. By comparison, House Republicans are mostly united on their goals, while they differ on the tactics and the rules of governing the House of Representatives. The current crisis has already forced the House to go in three days without having a Speaker. Uh, obviously, the House now does have a Speaker, um, but... Uh, I guess AOC is no longer bringing the ruckus to Congress, as she once said. Um, uh, when she talks about, uh, you know, members of Congress complaining about how they were acting on Build Back Better and the infrastructure bill, I mean, what did the progressives win out of the infrastructure bill? Uh, out, the infrastructure bill ended up being somewhere around $1.7 trillion in spending. Um, if I remember correctly, back in, like, 2018, former President Trump wanted an infrastructure bill, that was $4 trillion in spending. The Democrats put up an infrastructure bill that was somewhere in that range at first, and then even before starting to negotiate with, with Republicans, the Democrats themselves negotiated it down to roughly uh, $2 trillion, and then they let the Republicans negotiate it down even more to $1.7 trillion, um, which is far, far, far less than the country needs, and far less than Republican President Trump was pushing just a couple of years earlier, and in that time frame, the infrastructure was falling apart even more. So realistically, it should be more than the $4 trillion that even Trump had pushed for uh, back in 2018-ish. Um, again, it's bill after bill after bill. Uh, Democrats also, and progressives, could have held up legislation when Roe versus Wade uh, was overturned, say, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna halt everything until we get votes on this. But it's thing after thing after thing that they don't do this sort of thing on, that we're clearly now seeing the Freedom Caucus actually use their power and see what it's like when a group of people actually use their power and numbers to buck the establishment and do something about it. Um, in this case, right off the bat here, as we started at the top of this, was cutting defense spending. And you know what? That's something that we can all be happy about. We'll ultimately see, though, um, you know, these guys are also going to try to push cuts in everything possible. Um, a lot of those things would likely not be good for progressive politics. However, there are some things that the progressives can try to get done with these guys. And while some of you might disagree with me on this, I think that they should potentially work with them to do it. Um, uh, stay tuned on some of this. This is obviously all happening very quickly, and who knows, um, you know, what's going to what's gonna go on with this. The members of the Freedom Caucus purely are holding on to their power and, and are owning Kevin McCarthy right now. I would not to be want to be in Kevin McCarthy's shoes. He is going to have a very difficult two years ahead. Um, stay tuned to Status Quo. We're going to have a live stream every day this week. Uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Uh, you can also give me a follow on Twitter. That's at LewisD217. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.